today's broadcast. Jesus name. We were talking about something in the survival kit class. Uh, actually, I think, you know, it's kind of Jamal had ended with sometimes we could take some things for granted. And one thing about, you know, recognize we have to be in union with Christ. The indwelling Christ has to control all. And sometimes we can end up serving the flesh. We're a product of our choice. That's what the book says, right? So if we choose to yield to Christ, Blanca, we good, right? Right? But if we don't yield to Christ, we get on everybody's nerves around us. Ain't that right, Keyshawn? All right, good. He's out there, you know, in the BC days living in funk. That wasn't nice for us. <laughs> right? Living in the BC days. And then you really, really, really be committed. You know, like, so you commit it, but then when you find out what it is, it's like, no, no, I didn't say I was committing, committing. I just said I was committing, but not committing, 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 you know. Well, you ain't tell me that that's what was entailed. You, you, you know, I, I know, I'm saying it in my language, but y'all understand what I'm talking about, right? And so, uh, you run into these, what do I do situations? Because your mind says... Uh, so, so we're going to use you, uh, Venetia. So, you know, so you, you come, you committed to God and you're like, okay, so, so, uh, so, so what's the, what's the shortcut? The cleft notes to this thing? <laughs> shortcut. Oh, I just want to know when does it happen? Well, you just started. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like you got, like, you, it's hard to just let it evolve. Right. Cause you like, okay, okay, okay. I'm here. So now it starts, right? Uh, uh, no, it's process. You got to keep taking the next step from here. Like, like you know, some of y'all, you want a, a homemade cake without going through the process of really baking it. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you want a homemade store-bought cake. Like, no, 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 you got to just go through the eggs, do whatever. Then you want to put it in the oven like, and you want it, that's why y'all like microwaves. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, cause you, you, you want it now. <laughs> babe, babe, don't get me started. It's more than oatmeal. <laughs> All right, so, in addition to, right? So, 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 so keep this in mind. You've, you've reached God's unknown and you're leaving the limits of what's been done in your life. You can embrace the challenge if you recognize it's not a time to prove yourself, but to grow yourself. I right, said, so you, you're reaching this place of unknown, or, or you've discovered where you've been, even though you were trying to pretend you weren't there. You're gonna pass the test. We were talking about this this morning, right? It, you, you're, you're, you're right in, in place if you recognize it's not your time to prove yourself, to hold up any standard, to keep up with anybody. It's, it's your time to grow yourself. See, see, so, so, so uh, these are the players used to play for me in high school, I coached the high school team, and they used to get so frustrated, you teach them all the drills and stuff. <laughs> okay, uh, why, why, why is this not, oh, oh, slow down, Tex, you're in high school. This is where you learn the game. But in their mind, they, because they feel they're adults, right? They figure, well, you gave me the system. It should just work because you told me. No one wants to go through the process. It's a benefit we're going through the process. You discover things we're going through the process, right? All right, so, so, so understand it's time, your time to grow yourself. Now, in this when I don't know what to do, there's, there's a couple things you have to, you, you're going to need to handle this so you don't quit. So you don't get overwhelmed and just, you, you know, shut down. Uh, isolate yourself. Check out. Uh, alienate yourself by getting mad at someone or creating. You, how, how many people create arguments? Oh, y'all not going to raise your hand so we can discover. Thank you. We got a couple over there. We got a couple. We starting arguments, you know, like, you know, just. How, how many people start arguments when it looks like you about to get discovered? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Ty put his hand up. You know, like, I'm saying, like, you know, you about to get busted out. So you got to create a diversion. 
Well, you, well, Pastor Mel, uh, 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 16 months ago, you wasn't perfect either. Like, <laughs> oh, y'all know what I'm talking about. Only, on, uh, Ty, you, thank Ty, you know what I'm talking about. The rest of y'all is still in denial. Right? Well, well, see, that's quit. You quitting. Right? You're not embracing the challenge. And I, 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 some things have to help you to get through this. This, this is key. Follow the peace of God. So, so, so something's come up. Uh, it seems insurmountable. I haven't been here before. Every new level is a new level, right? Every new job is a new training, right? Uh, every new environment is, 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 you have to discover the neighborhood and, and where to go to the store. And, you know, like everything is, is new. It's different, right? Right? I, so, so, so. Because, see, we, we've been talking about the promise, and sometimes it could be too much. Like, even, you know how, uh, so I use you over here, Tanya. So, you know how, so remember when you was checked out, and if you don't mind me saying, smoked out? <laughs> you, remember, you remember back, BC? You remember that? All right, so, so you remember how... <laughs> Do we got to use you for some examples? All right, so I was trying to use Tanya, man. He, he like amen and over there. All right, but so, 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 so remember how your eyes, was, you said this this morning, you said your, the eyes of your understanding is being enlightened. I'm going to say more enlightened because when you came out of where you were, there was an enlightenment. Now, there was something waiting for you when you came out, God's blessings and favor. So at first it's like, Oh, wonderful. But then they kept coming, right? Then it was like, oh my God, can I handle it or am I going to be able to sustain it? Right? Then you're getting promotions for jobs you weren't ready for. No, jobs you were ready for, but you didn't believe you were ready for, right? So it, it seems kind of overwhelming. So the temptation is to what? That's enough. Right? That's, the, that's enough. Or that's not really all that necessary. It don't really take all that. That's okay. I'm good. But what you're really saying is, I, I, I'm not comfortable there. Right? You ever not take a promotion because you're like, oh, no, 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 I'm good. See, I'm, I'm a behind the scenes person. Otherwise, interpret, I don't want the responsibility. <laughs> right? I right, so I'm saying that when, when you feel stuck like that, follow the peace of God. Philippians 4, 4 7. Let's look here. Philippians 4 7. We, see, see, we talk about all these promises, Minister Sammy, and they're going to come, they're coming through, but as they come through, it, it could be overwhelming. You know, it could be, it could be a bit much. And sometimes we don't experience some things that be like, oh, no, I don't want to do that. Like it was, it would have been easier for us to stay at the last location than to believe God to move here. And it'd be easier to just, when the lease is up, sign another lease here versus going to dealing with uh, construction. Uh, this week we, uh, uh, you know, for this financial company, just, just dealing, you know, filling out spreadsheets, putting all the numbers and stuff together. Oh, it's so easy to just not even bother with all that. We could just sign another lease, <laughs> right? Pay an extra, pay more than it would take for a building, right? But, you, but we can't quit. We got to follow the peace of God. Philippians 4. Because, see, you're going to need all these little keys, or all these little triggers, all these little nuggets coming up here. So, uh, Philippians 4, 7, it says, and the peace of God, which which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So follow the peace. So this is the key. When you have a tough decision, if there's a pull, Holy Spirit is like, ah, you might want to back up off of that. But if there's a peace, roll with it. That peace is saying, God's like, I got you there. Right? So you want to follow the peace. Uh, the other thing is you want to employ patience. You want to employ patience. Because, you know, 
when, when you're in tough situations and you got so many decisions to make, urgency can have you panic and take the path of least resistance. Because, you, all right, so, so I'll use my wife. So you, you got to make a bunch of decisions. So it's like, well, babe, what about this, 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 that, and the other? And sometimes the thought is, well, just, just do that. And sometimes she might ask me for something. And I got like, you got the whole vision. You got all these different people. You got things all over the country. I'd be like, man, just, y'all can just do whatever. But what I have to do is employ patience. All right, so break it down to me. Give me the specifics. Let's talk through it. Let's sit down and, can, and go through all the considerations, even though I just want to get it over with. Right? My flesh wants to get it over with. No, forget getting it over with. We're just going to walk through it. And we do that. The same thing, like, she, 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 you know, because this is the spontaneous person. Y'all know that already, right? So she presents something spontaneous, but where, where she's grown in her life, she'll present something spontaneous. So, again, that's going to trigger vision questions for me. All right, baby, what about this, this, that, and the other? So she said, okay, well, I've researched this, I've studied that, I've studied that. Now, before, it would be like, I don't understand why we just can't do it. Because uh, it has to attach to a lot of other things. But we both have to be patient, right? So that scripture I gave you, uh, James chapter 1, 2 through 4, it says, count it all joy when you fall into different tests and trials. No, no, no. It didn't say panic. It didn't say get in fear. Mm -hmm. It didn't say get in anxiety. Scripture says be anxious for nothing. Philippians 4, 6, right? It says count it joy, Amen. right? This is, uh, Ty was saying this earlier in the survival kit class. He said he's looking at things different. So what he said was when stuff come up, I, I see it as an opportunity that God is going to do something. Let me see what God's going to do on this one. He said before it would be like, oh God, a situation. J just because it was a situation. But he realizes that it's an opportunity. Either to learn something, to experience something, to see God operate another level, prepare you for the next test and the next level. Right? But you have to be patient through it. Not react, right? Respond. So count it all joy when you fall into different tests and trials. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith works or employs patience. Let patience have its perfect work, complete work, a job in your life. So you can be perfect or complete lacking nothing that you need to be fulfilled in life. So I did a teaching years ago in Ohio and uh, uh, did a little mini skit. And the skit was, you know, a patient shows up, Tiffany, she's coming to get a job. So a patient shows up and says, hey, you know, uh, just wanted to get a job. Uh, you know, uh, you know, just figure out, you know, work for your fine establishment here. Um, uh, sorry, uh, patients, we, we can't employ you right now. Who's, who's, why not? No, no, no. Uh, circumstances, uh, anxiousness, frustration, fear, worst case scenarios, uh, they are filling these positions right now. You know, and, and they've been with us for a long time. You know, I mean, you know, I said, yeah, yeah, we, you know, uh, you know, they're permanent employees. We're used to them. We know how they operate. Uh, uh, well, you know, uh, listen. Um, I think I can do the job much better. I mean, you know, we're evolving. You know, uh, times are changing. Um, I think I just, we could be a lot more relevant. We can get st stuff done a lot more quicker, uh, a lot more seamless. We don't have to do any rework. Uh, you know, I've kind of researched, and you guys are working harder than you have to. Yeah, 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 they're not doing a great job. <laughs> but we've become accustomed to how they operate. We, we, at least we know what we, we don't know what we're going to get with you, but we know what we've had. And we're just used to it. That's how we roll. That's how we operate. Man, give patients a job, man. Hire patients. Right? And you'll find yourself lacking nothing. So employ patience uh, through this process, right? See, see, this is the thing. Uh, you know, I, I was picking with Venetia, but I can, you know, stop, stop picking with her, but a lot of us can relate to this. If we can employ patients, we can get all God has for us. Because we'll let it evolve. Why don't we get 
what God is trying to transform in us because we panic. Afraid is not going to happen because it's not happening as quick as our flesh wanted to happen. And we take a bribe. We get pulled out of position or place. I will tell you this. I learned this years ago. Uh, I'm, I'm, we're getting closer and closer to applying it uh, more and more in our lives. But you can get anything you want in life if you're patient. You pick something, you get one. I know my, my best friend growing up, his mom, she was frugal. We called her, I don't know if y'all, y'all, the older people seen the eye couple back in the day with uh, Oscar and Felix Unger. So we used to call his mom Felix. If y'all remember, Felix was a meticulous guy. Like, everything had to be spotless. Oscar was a slob. But his mom was meticulous. And she had like the, uh, the coupon um, files. I mean, she had coupons for everything. Before, you know, I know they got shows now, right? Was this coupon? No, she was, this is back in the 70s. Like she, she, they probably use her as the example for how to do coupons. But I noticed something. She was a librarian too. When she bought her first Mercedes, pay for it cash. She took her time. She drove the, the car she had. She just took her time, drove that car as long as she want. And then I, I went over the house one day, brand new Mercedes. Pay for it cash. Was she a multi-millionaire? Nope. She was patient. Look, she had to be patient when other people were getting cars. <laughs> she had to be patient when people was like, so you still driving that Chevy Nova? Yeah, I don't even know what a Chevy Nova is, but it was a car. Uh, right? No, no, she had to be patient. You can get anything you want. Now, I'm not telling you to wait for 25 years if, if you need to. What I'm saying is patience. Let it evolve. So you're starting this process. God's trying to send you the promises. Will you allow yourself to take the patient steps to let God give you what he wants? Will you panic and take a bribe, compromise, run to doing something or getting involved in a relationship, taking on the wrong employment? just because it looks like other people's things are happening faster than you, right? So, so employ patience, right? Now, now, through this process, you're gonna be offered bribes, okay? God said, be, you have need of patience. We, we talked about this in the promise, right? You have need of patience, what? After you've done the will of God, you might receive the promise. So we gotta be patient, Jason, through that process, right? Now, but while you're trying to be patient, you're gonna be offered bribes. I call them spiritual bribes. Right. You're going to be offered bribes. You know, uh, you're going to be offered. You're either going to be punked through circumstances. So the adversary will always try to create circumstances and get you to react to the circumstances. Because normally you just is everything. God tells you to go here and then a circumstance come up. You go. It's a it's a circumstance on the road. That's like when Jesus told the disciples, hey, let's go to the other side. Then the storm start kicking. The boat start hopping and jumping. Water start filling up the boat. Right? The Jesus sleep. The disciples are like, master, don't you care that we perish? Jesus got up. Oh, man. How long have I been with y'all? Peace be still. But you know, I had a talk with Jesus. You know what Jesus told me? He's like, well, I don't understand why they was tripping. I said, let's go to the other side. I didn't say, let's go to this side. But if there's a storm, let's turn around. If the circumstances come, then don't do what, my, what I told you with my word. Even though God said in Isaiah 55, my words will go out. And they won't return to me void. It'll accomplish what I sent it to do. Man, just be patient and let it evolve. Trust what I told you. That's why we tell people all the time what you're playing off of. See, if you're playing off of your feelings, if you're playing off of what they are doing, if you're playing off of the circumstances, well, you're going to be like a roller ride, like a roller coaster ride. But if you're playing off of God, he says, oh, uh, Pastor Keith, I, I think that may be the one. Did God tell you that's the one? If God tell you that's the one, you're good. Now, no matter what the circumstances is, I don't know if we have the money to get married. Well, I don't know if we need to move location. Don't make a difference, right? Because God said 
something and you're not playing off of circumstances. But if you're playing off of, they just make me feel wonderful. Well, today they do. <laughs> That's subject to change. Everybody in a relationship can relate to that, right? Can I get an amen? Yeah. Don't, don't, don't have me bring Minister Sammy up here. <laughs> Start hooping on y'all. Right, so, but, right? You understand what I'm saying? So we're, we're, we're playing off of what God says, right? Not circumstances. Now, if the circumstances don't work, what he'll try to do is send you a bribe, an opportunity. See, because if people aren't playing off of God, they'll play off of, they'll either panic when it's unfavorable, or they'll jump at it because it looks good. See, see, remember this is Eve. It started way back with Eve. And she, uh, he showed her the, the fruit. She says it was pleasant to look at and to make one wise. To look good and to feel good. Right? Lust of the eyes. Lust of the flesh and a pride of life. It was all about her. See, so, he, so the adversary will always, he, the adversary got the same playbook. He'll always try to send you something that hopefully you'll lust to see. Right? It, it'll make you feel good. Or it'll get your status. I'm special. Those are called opportunity decisions. So we got circumstances decisions, right? We got opportunity decisions, but what we want to operate off is purpose decisions. Right? Those are God decisions, right? Right? So we want to uh, Make purpose decisions, not circumstances or opportunity decisions. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Lean not your own understanding. All your ways acknowledge him. He shall direct your path. Right? Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
and then um, something I've always shared with a, a lot of people I've had an opportunity to serve as a mentor is you're always going to have a few crucial and unpopular decisions in your life. You know, I think like throughout your life, it's like 10 to 12 crucial. And, uh, see, they're crucial because it seems like everything's on the line. Unpopular because there ain't a crowd going in that direction. Right? They're normally... It's unpopular because how you're being led by God, you don't have a whole lot of support. Or a whole lot of people don't, 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 may not even understand. Like when God told us to come to Charlotte, I mean, I have people going, okay, Keith, you sure? Like, you need to think this through, man. Like, ain't nobody out there. You ain't got no building out there, no people out there. Come on, man. One person was just like, really? Like, trying to help. Man, I just want to make sure you're making the right decision. Otherwise interpreted, are you crazy? But, but I guess you know, what I told my wife at the end of the conversation, I said, well, babe, that person reacted to something and talked to me in 15 minutes, something that we've been praying about for 15, 16 years. Right? So it's understandable how the circumstances didn't look right. Right? And so you're going to have to make these crucial and unpopular decisions. But see, Matthew 7, 13, it says... Let's go there real quick. Matthew 7, 13. And we're, we're going to, the next few weeks, we're going to walk through how to handle these tough choices. Because we're, we're going to have some tough choices. Like, like, listen, children of Israel, Sade, they went over, they, they was going to the promised land. And so, you, so this is how we be thinking. Promise, year of promise, what? Promise, yeah, we, we dancing. It's a year of promise. Talking to each other, you know, y'all go hang out. You know how y'all do, right? Yeah, 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 promise. Just wait for my promises, sister, promises. And then you hear promises mentioned, you know, while you out eating. What, you heard that, right? Promises, promises. Yeah, that's God right there. That's God right there. That's God, <laughs> right? That's how we roll, right? Every time you hear the word promise. Oh, uh, that's the vision. That's the vision. That's the vision right there. That's the vision. Boy, I tell you, Pastor Keith, Pastor Mel, they prophets. Right? That's, right. that's kind of how, that's, that's how we roll, right? right? Like you ain't got nothing to do. No. <laughs> you know, you just like, Tiff, you just, you know, you just do 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 Hey, how's things going? I don't know. I just tripped and fell in this world of promise. So, so, so what did you have to do? Oh, nothing. It just, you know, just overtook me. Nothing. But the children of Israel went to the land of promise. They had to do something. And a couple of them thought like some of us think. They got over to the promised land. Now, other people was getting their land and building homes. And a couple of tribes was like, so Joshua Caleb, he's got a question. Do, do we get something? Like, I, I noticed everybody rolling. Dude, build a duplex over there. Where's our stuff? He said, oh, no. Where you been? You got to go possess it. You got to take it. He says, you got to use your faith to believe what God told you. Go into the place where he sent you and know it's yours. Mm -hmm. Independent of the circumstances. Oh, that, but there's, people, there's giants in the land. What they got to do with what God told you? They, they said they ain't giving it up. So? Just like you did with Jericho. Walk around seven times till to, to they get scared and run. <laughs> right? You got to operate in the knowing, right? All right, so what did I tell you to go? Matthew 7, 13. It says, enter ye in the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. But, and many there be which go in there at. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. So, so, so it's a crucial and unpopular decision because ain't too many people on that road. Very few people on that road. Right? And so, so, so that's why it's tough. Because walk not in the counsel of God, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful, but your delight shall be in the law of the Lord. And in the law should you meditate day and night. So you're not around ungodly counsel. People that only play off of circumstances and favorable situations. Yeah, obedience is a cuss, a cuss word to them. Oh, no, 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 no. This, this don't even look right. Why are you doing this? Oh, God told me. 
Well, what about the circumstances? No, God told me. Oh, no, no, you crazy. There's something wrong with you. You one of them fanatic people. I don't know if I'm a fanatic person, but I am an obedient person. And every time I'm obedient, I'm fulfilled, right? Yeah, so, so that's what you're, you're operating off of. This is, you're not trying to be conformed to this world, but you're trying to be transformed, right? Right? See, 1 Corinthians 1, let's go there. Crucial and unpopular decisions. See, see, we process this stuff right, quitting is, won't be an option, right, if we process this right. So 1 Corinthians 1, you know, I spent all that time last night, I had no energy yesterday. Like, especially when I was in here doing the sound. None. And I was up all night. I, had, I was fine. I didn't fall asleep. You know, then this morning I felt good. feel good now. And I actually can read this without my glasses. So that's God, I guess. It's God. <laughs> First Corinthians. I, I already knew what you was thinking over there, so I don't know why I said that. So 1 Corinthians 1, 25, it says, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, right? What they think you should do. And the weakness of God is stronger than men, verse 27. But God has chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound things which are mighty. Crucial and unpopular decisions. So, so we're talking about this because we're going to have to make tough choices, we're going to have to make some tough choices. We've been had to make them, right, Ed? We've been had to make them the whole time. Like, in some cases, we're, uh, as uh, 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 Tanya was talking about earlier, the IG understanding, like, when you're IG understanding, like, the choices that you already had to make that you was numbing yourself to through food and drink and smoke and lust and shopping, the, the choices be sitting there waiting, <laughs> Yeah, like it's like they never go nowhere. Like you just come to the house and they sitting outside. You just there all the time. Yeah, so whenever you decide that yeah, I'm still here. You know, then you get busy, you start doing stuff. Tough choices be like, yeah, you, you, you know how you have people that keep calling your house? And you can't do nothing. Like they just want to sell you stuff. Right? Tough choices. Tough choices. Tough we going to do this or what? Then you get busy, you go on vacation, you know, you, you know, uh, you get busy, look, you get busy helping somebody that you really don't want to help, but it's keeping you busy. It's your, it's your penance, you know, your little penance you do, all right? It is, when you finish with your penance, we're going to do this or what? Tough choices ain't going nowhere. Not, oh yeah, they are going somewhere. When you make the choice. <laughs> That's the only way you get rid of tough choices. You got to... Embrace and make the choice. See, it's like, uh, you got examples. Abraham had to offer Isaac. That's a tough choice. You believe in all this time for a blessing, a son that's supposed to have a nation, and then God said, yeah, give me, the, give, give me that. Give me that. <laughs> give me that. The very thing that you done worked for, invested in, give me that. They, they think I'm talking about Abraham and his son. No, there's some things you've been working for and investing. If God said, give me that, you going to get it to him? Or you don't have to answer because you ain't been giving it to him, so we already know the answer. <laughs> but see, in, until you make that tough choice, see, see, all you're believing for is on, on the other side of your obedience. Everything Isaiah, I mean, uh, Abraham was believing for was the other side of his obedience. So, as, long, as soon as he was obedient, stuff just kept coming unstoppable blessings and favor, right? Right? Look, look, Moses was in a situation where he had worked so hard to be in position as, as a key pillar to inherit Pharaoh's kingdom. Those tough choices, he was seeing a little indication. Now, he knew he wasn't, come on, he ain't look like them, he ain't act like them, and he wasn't feeling them. I know, I just grew up with foster, foster parents. We just, we just didn't flow. I couldn't eat that food they cooked. I mean, not, it's, it's probably, uh, Pastor Mel was living there. She probably ate everything they cooked. I mean, she, I mean, because, you know, the okra, the greens. Oh, you like greens? They, they cook greens religiously. Greens, green, greens, greens. All, all, you like black eyed peas and stuff like that. You like country food. They cook country, right? Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm in the country, so I have to say soul food. 
Because that sound more cool. He just said it. He just said it. He just said it. Soul food. Soul food, brother. Like I said, country food. <laughs> nah, I, I, it's, it's, so, but not because it was bad food or nasty food. I guess it's relative. You see, my wife said for me it was. It was. So I, I told y'all the story. I used to, I had to take out the garbage. And we had to use the brown paper bags. And you had to put the newspaper at the bottom so stuff wouldn't go through. I would lift up the newspaper. I, I, I took all the paper towels I could, put my food in there, wrapped it, put it underneath the paper, and put the paper down. So if you look to see if I threw away the food, you would see the paper. I just used my intellect here, my engineering. Because <laughs> I wasn't eating that food. But there's a lot of choices they made, and it just didn't fit with me. But I, I told my wife this story. My sister Diane, a lot of y'all know her. Uh, the first time I ever went to visit her in Washington, D.C., uh, I opened a refrigerator. Everything I liked was in there. It was my first time visiting her, spending any time with her. I was like, now this is, now we can roll right here. <laughs> we, now we talking. <laughs> there is a God. This is heaven. <laughs> but what it was is I didn't fit. And sometimes, like, we're putting ourselves in situations where we don't fit, but we have status. Ooh, got you on that one, didn't I? So, so the scripture said Moses refused the pleasures of sin for a season. He'd rather be obedient and get what God had. Trust, look, the uncertain thing. He was in certain prosperity and status. Gave up the certain thing for the uncertain thing. How many, we gonna, how many people are going to do that? But that, that's what we See, tough choices. You have to make tough choices. We had to do it. We gave up a certain thing. We were in a comfortable place. A place well known. And a place where we already had built an established ministry. And God sent us to an uncertain place. Now most people will be like, yeah, it's got to be a neutral way to do this. Well, God was, he wasn't offering no neutral ways. You know, like, you know what the neutral way is? You could do both. You know, visit Charlotte on the weekends or something. <laughs> and then go back to our comforts, our reputation, and all, you know, all, all our connections, you know, during the week. Didn't work that way, Mr. Sam. God wouldn't allow it, Right? We had to be totally obedient. So do you. Uh, that was Hebrews eleven twenty five. This is Moses uh, uh, passing up the pleasures of sin for a season <laughs> to be obedient. So he said, "You right now, not right now. Last week, week before, seven months ago, God has been trying to get you to be obedient, and you've been trying to figure ways out. Or you know, sometimes you only figure a way out. You just get busy." And then you say, well, I would have done that, but I was busy. God said, shut those excuses down and be obedient. All right? All right, so these are the keys to breakthrough. We're talking about not quitting, right? So, so I just give you a few keys to breakthrough, right? Because you want to break through that, right, Mr. Sammy? Because you want the promise on the other side, right? Look, look, look. Mr. Sammy said, I'm on it. Got to have it. Say that last part. Got to have it. So, so it's not optional then. Like, like it's almost like I can't breathe without it. Right? You, may, you can't move without it. Actually, what he said, what you added to is, is, is the reality. Now, you might not see it because you may be, 1 Corinthians 13, looking through a glass darkly or looking as in a riddle or an enigma. But that's the true reality. You can't live without it. Now you're going to walk out the door, some of y'all walk out the door, and your mind will tell you, oh, no, that's cool. Like, like you, know, you know how you hear what God is telling you? Sometimes you hear what God is telling you. And you know how the flesh be like, not, I ain't doing that, but you just don't do it. You know what I mean? Like, you just, and you just operate business as usual until the next conviction comes up. <laughs> right? You know what I'm saying? Like, you just, you know how that is, right? He's just like, eh, well, you know, I'm not going to do that right now. And it, it but. But you don't say it, Tiff. You don't say it. You just like, man, that's, you know, and then you might say, do stuff like this. Now that's God right there, you know. Oh, no, this, what's, this, what's the line? 
Man, Pastor stepped on my toes today, boy. I tell you, woo, boy, he stepped on my toes. So that otherwise interpreted is, man, I need to change and do some things different. But in your mind, you're saying, I acknowledge that I need to do something different. So that's it, right? I can just acknowledge it. And then I'll add something to it. Man, I need to get myself together. Now I'm so wrong. I need to be more obedient. I ain't doing right. Like you, you would even beat yourself up a little bit. You know how that go, right? As if that's the goal. The goal is for you to acknowledge it, talk about it, beat yourself up about it, and live the way you was living before. And that is not the goal. The goal, everybody, is change. That's the goal. Like God is trying to get to, we just, God is up to something, right? God's up to something good. You know what the good thing he's up to? And the good works that we talked about in, in a Survivor Kid class that he's trying to perform through us is what he purposed you to do. When you start to go off the rails and then he comes to correct you to get you back in line, it's to change. It's not a punishment. He's assuming you want to be fulfilled. Duh, excuse him. <laughs> That's what he's assuming. He's not assuming that you want to live what you've been living out what you've been doing for the last 15 years for another 15. And he's like, are we going to do this children of Israel in the wilderness thing all over again? Spend 40 years or something that take 11 days to change? I mean, grant you, it takes some time, but some days, not years. Right? Okay. All right. So we good? Everybody still here? Just checking. Because we ain't quitting no more, right? Okay, all right. We'll see after we get to this, these next keys. All right, so, so, so number one key to breaking through and not quitting is learn from the resilient ones. Just learn from the resilient ones. Watch the resilient ones' behavior and learn from them, right? Don't ignore them. Don't hate on them. Don't pretend they're not there. Because the resilient ones be getting on your nerves, don't they? You know, it's like you go to, uh, uh, so I'm going to use Tiff. Like, Tiff go to school, get good grades and stuff like that. See, she get on other students' nerves. Because there's a lot of students, like, they chilling. So, like, if, if Tiff get a bad grade, oh, man, they, they probably going to have a party that day. It's going to be a party on campus. Because now they're going to feel better about not achieving higher heights as opposed to being disappointed that their resilient one is not keeping that standard up for them. Right? And so, so, uh, so Pastor Mel, we growing, we said we growing, right? So we growing and we keep going to levels, but like we see different sometimes. Like, listen, we don't have sleep, we're sleep deprived and food deprived at times, right? We're impatient at times. Oh Lord, don't let nobody see it. It'd be like, oh, good, so I don't have to. Look, you ain't never patient. You'll find me impatient once. And be like, yeah, see, see. That's, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Look, come on, Mr. Holy. What you doing impatient? Uh, sleep deprived, food deprived like you? Right, but, but see, you, you, uh, uh, that Jezebel spirit always looks to, de uh, look to lower the standard so they don't have to meet it. So they hoping Tiffany get a bad grade. Y'all think I'm talking about Tiffany and bad grades? Okay, good, good, good. As long as everybody on the same page. Right, so resilience is enduring the seemingly impossible look until you're pushing to the possible realm. So, so when, it, when, it, when it comes at you, it's seemingly very impossible. So I got to change from this place that I should have never been in. It seems impossible. But I have to, be, I have to take on a resilience to keep pushing to I break into the possible realm. When I break into the possible realm, whoa, all types of stuff start happening. And it just keep happening and keep happening and happening and happening. Right? Because what? I'm resilient. 
Right? So, so look, look, Mark, uh, Mark 9, 23. It says, Jesus said unto him, if, if thou canst believe, stay resilient in your faith, is what that means. All things are possible to him that believeth. Look, look, look when, the word, when the Bible in the King James Version, Jason says stuff like believeth, it's a continual thing. It didn't say, well, if, if you believe that one time, it's probably possible. I'm not sure. No, no, it's believeth. When a son of man comes, shall he find faith? That means you have to be faithful all the time to find you faithful. Right? Right? Since it's all things are possible. If you're hanging there, don't quit. Right? Uh, so 2 Corinthians 4. In 2 Corinthians 4, 8. Look, 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 look. Listen, I love this because this is, re this is resilience in action here. Look, it says we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. Right? We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body of dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. So what it's saying is, I deal with everything you deal with. I just respond different. It's what Ty was talking about earlier. Ty said it, 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 there was a point when, when stuff came at him, he looked like what came at him. <laughs> he said he shifted to, oh, no, no, no. I ain't got nothing to do with what's coming at me. I'm going to respond, ooh, how God going to work this out? So when you saw him, he didn't look like what came out. Then they said they were saying that yesterday, you know, I, I don't know if it's a Kojic thing or something, but they, because they kept repeating it. I don't look like what I've been through. It might just be an everybody thing, but since it was repeated so much last night, right? Right? So, so that's what Ty was saying. He said, oh, no, 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 no. You ain't going to even know what I'm going through. Because I don't just, I don't just jump into the circumstances because they present themselves. I jump into Christ. <laughs> right? Because I'm, re I'm, I'm resilient, all right? All right, so I, I want to I give you this. Uh, I actually had it printed for you. Apologize, you have to get it next week. This is another version, a couple versions. But Ma Malachi 3, 13 through 18. I believe this is the Amplified I'm going to read, and I, I don't know if it's NIV. But it says, your words have been stout against me, saith the Lord. Yet ye say, what have we spoken so much against you, God? Right? He said, ye have said it is vain to serve God. And what profit is it that we have kept his ordinance, that we stay resilient, and that we have walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts? Like, why are we doing that? Why is that important? He's saying when you start saying stuff like that, you, your words are stout against me. When you open your mouth to say it's not necessary to believe. Right? He says, and now we call the proud happy. So people that are in pride, that are not obedient, we endorse their lives and go, yeah, but they happy. So the measure is not obedience. The measure is comfort temporary comfort at that right he says God said what's going on he said yay they that work wickedness are set up we, we put them on a high pedestal yay they that tempt God are even delivered we we helping people that tempt God see we're, we're helping to compromise because they make us comfortable we're not helping the covenant folk because they make us uncomfortable. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I'm just telling you what the Bible says. All right. Uh, then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another. They that have reverence for the Lord spake often. And the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that what? Feared the Lord. That thought upon his name. His character and his honor, his resilience. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts. And in that day when I make up my jewels, I will spare them. As a man spareth his own son that serveth him. Then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked. Between them that serveth God and them that serveth not. You have said terrible things about me, saith the Lord. 
But you say, what do you mean? I, I'm sorry, that was another verse. I don't want to read it. What he was saying is, see, again, what, I, what we're talking about is no quit. And we're saying no quit in the midst of a lot of compromise. But God is saying the people that are compromised are saying some crazy stuff because they don't believe. They have to justify their compromise. And you're trying not to compromise. He said, there's people talking to each other about me and what they believe and my promises, the things I've said to them. He said, I'm listening to them. He says, and I'm going to show up. And he said, then you're going to now, now you'll properly discern or look or check out those that have been consistent with me, been patient, followed my peace, made crucial and unpopular decisions, right? Have not given up, have not quit. And those that have not. And you're going to see a, a big difference. It's going to be easy to say, now those are people that believe God. I wish I'd have done that. Is that going to be, are you going to be the people they're talking about? Or are you going to be the ones like uh, Mika was talking about? Mika said it was two sides. And in the two sides, she said that there were some that, yeah, they, 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 none of them had weapons. She said, well, who believes that they can take out this devil? He says, those that believe, sit, go over here. Those that don't, go over here. And in the end, they said, well, what weapons are we going to use? Now, we believe you, but how are we going to do this? With the word. The word that's in you. He said, they took them out. Those that believed. Interesting enough, that's the story she told to start out. What side are you going to be on? <sighs> I got a better question. What side are you on now? Because it's, it's going to hurt your heart when that, when, that, when that train leaving and you ain't on it. Or like we were talking about uh, having movie night. We were talking about the, the, I think, I don't know, it was Apoc Apocalypse or the Prophecy. And so people got translated, right? You know, they left their clothes and stuff like that. So, so one person didn't know what was going on. So he just ran into the church, you know. And so the preacher told him what was going on. They was like, you telling me what's going on? Why are you still here? See, all that sin was weighing them down. Couldn't be elevated. Which one, which one are you? Are you the quitter or the person with no quit? This is your David said in Psalm 27, 13. I know this next week. But he said, I would have fainted. I would have quit. Unless I believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Why, why did he say that? Why is that scripture in the Bible? That means David was contemplating or being tempted to quit. But he said in the midst of the circumstances and the compromise, I believe God's going to come through like he said. So I'm not going to get pulled into them. I'm going to stay connected to him. He believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. See? You notice I didn't say when we get to heaven. Yeah, you have everything you want in heaven. But so why God send you here? He said in the, the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. That's here and now. All right, I won't get to the next key until next week. But, but we'll, we'll, we'll stick with just that part of resilience. We'll finish up with resilience next week. But I just wanted to give you some thoughts. No quit. All right? No quit. See, see? Thanks for tuning in to today's broadcast. To view videos or make donations, feel free to access our website at www.heirscc.org. Remember, at Ayers, we believe we're just what you prayed for. <laughs>